Father, we pray for Fred and Kim this morning. God, that you would touch them this morning. God, let them be made well in the name of Jesus. We pray for Roxanne, Lord God, her eyes, God, that you would touch her. Oh, Lord God, that you would completely heal her eyes, both of them, Father, that she may see the glory and the praise of God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray for the, the needs of this family, our family, Lord God, this morning. God, we need you, Lord Jesus. The family needs Jesus more than ever before. Touch them this morning, Lord God, I pray. And bless this family, Lord Jesus. Let them see Jesus, Lord. Let them see Jesus, Lord. Let them see Jesus this morning, Father. In your precious name. In your precious name, Lord God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you, I tell you this morning, when Elisha, when Elisha said, Elijah said to Elijah, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Amen. What do you want from God this morning? I want a double portion Amen. of his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe God's doing the, some mighty things in your life. Amen. You're just going to see the beginning of it. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Hallelujah. And all you folks, keep it going with Jesus. Amen. Amen. He wants to bless you and touch you. And have his spirit upon you. And praise the Lord. So that you could reach others for Jesus. You might be the only people. Person in your family that sees Jesus. People need to hear Jesus. They need to see Jesus. And you might be the person that brings Jesus to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother, can I use you for a moment? Okay, brother, I'm going to ask you to pass these out. Um, some of you probably need to, one of each. Yeah, some of you are going to probably look on with somebody else, because I don't think we have that many, but look on with somebody else. And so while he's passing those out, give you something to think about, Brother Meeker and Brother Ronnie Burnett, if you'll come and receive the morning tithes and offerings, as the Lord has blessed you. How many are you blessed this morning? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, if you're blessed, raise your hand. You're blessed. Hallelujah. Now, God blesses you to bless others. Amen. So before you leave this place this morning, I'd like for you to bless someone this morning. And then I want you to take that blessing. See, God doesn't give you something he doesn't want you to give, up, give out to other people. And take that blessing that God gives you and give it to someone else. You say, I don't have the power. Yes, you do. Uh-huh. 
He gives you the power. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. did, I, did I quote that right? Yes. Greater things will you do because I go to the Father. How do, he's already anointed you, already blessed you to give blessing out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for this time of offering and praise. And Father, we thank you and we glorify you and we pray that you would have your divine will and way in this uh, portion of the service right now. In Jesus' name, bless those that can give this morning and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, Pastor, I can't sit still. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All of you know I work at Sam's Club. And Saturdays are good. Saturdays are a lot of prayer days because there's a lot of people coming to. Most of them are happy, but then there are some that are cranky hands. Cranky hands. So I'm in line and I'm scanning, and my vest only goes up to about here when I zip it up. And this guy says, Unzip your vest and let me see your shirt. <laughs> sure, okay. So I had my Waymaker t shirt on. So I unzipped it and he looked at it and he goes, Waymaker. I go, You know that, don't you? He goes, I do know that. And sure as God made the morning, we both broke out in song. Now, we're all back up and we're singing Waymaker, promise yes. keep words. Oh. He knew the words. And then his little wife gave me this little Jesus man. Oh. 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 Now, to encourage you guys, I have been tracked, which I haven't had been tracked in years. And I don't know if y'all know what a track is, but it's a, a little, like a little piece of information that explains how you can be saved and about the Lord. I've been tracked three times. Whoa. So us as Christians and brothers and sisters, are starting to get the message because it's out there. It's out there. And there's there's more Christians that have come to me in the five years I've been at the door <coughs> in the past six months mm. than there ever was. So I know that the war's on the move. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I just broke in tears and everybody in line is going, what are they singing? And I can oh. see them all in <laughs> Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And so I've been um, praying really hard to get along with the new GM because she is a house of fire. And so I got to a point where I had to ask the Lord, is, is it me or is it her that needs to change? Well, you know what the Lord said. <laughs> so I've been trying to learn to love this woman. And she has... And I've been praying that she'll calm down and slow her roll because she is just like a, a locomotive in that place now. God has slowed her roll. I have won a couple, and they're tiny battles, but the little battles are big things. I got my cart back at the door, and Thursday she says to me, why don't you bring your cowbell back in for Saturdays? Because that was a big thing. If I ring the cowbell, everybody wakes up and goes, oh yeah, we need to move forward. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, the little tiny things, but God is yeah. working as best as he can. And it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and can I tattle on oh. Lena? You yeah. had a testimony about your eyes oh, with the driver's license. Oh. You gotta yeah. tell that story. Yes, <laughs> it's a good one. Hello, Pastor Sheila, before I told you about my eye surgery on my left eye. And um, I was allergic to the dogs, so we had to just stop everything. So I went down to get my driver's license, and um, uh -oh. I passed it. Uh, no problem. It was in an hour there in 10 minutes. Yeah! And, and, um, before we went in, I thought you tell us a testimony, too. It was that we didn't see any parking place. But as we looked, there was one a little ways from the door and then another one right in front of the door. And uh, before we left home, we dumped all of our change in the dish. And they had meters there. We didn't have any change equipment. <laughs> anyway, we moved to the handicap, which was legal. And we got inside the door. 
It's a big sign that you have to have an appointment for this office. Oh, we didn't yeah. have one. And uh, he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll try to get you in, and uh, we're not that busy. And so uh, he had Ron pull a number out of the little box before I could get my coat off. They called my number. <laughs> <laughs> they called me over there, I read the letters, took my ugly picture, and went over the Praise the Lord. I, I love that too. She told me that before church. And and uh, I, I was going to say, watch out everybody when you're driving. <laughs> that, no, I am happy that you got it. I forgot one thing. <laughs> when I was 18 years old is when I got my first license. And all these years I've had restrictions for eyeglasses and they took it off. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Hallelujah. That is really awesome. God is doing some good things. He's on the move. Praise the Lord. You know, we've been talking about different things uh, in in the book of Revelation. We we've been talking about the the rapture of the church talking about the 144,000 Jews. They're not Jehovah Witnesses, the Jews. And we're talking about the two witnesses. Hallelujah. Elijah and Enoch, or some people think it's going to be Moses because some of the plagues are still the same as Moses had when he went to before Pharaoh. But see, God can do things. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, yes. Those two had never died. God took them. And before we, the Bible says that Enoch was with, he walked with God and then he was gone. God took him. Elijah, we know that God took him in a whirlwind. That God took him in the stairs of heaven. And he just walked up and then he, his mantle fell down and Elisha picked it up and used the mantle. It was Elijah's mantle, but it was a, a way of contact. And uh, I, I think, thank you for that. You can go ahead and raise that up. If you don't mind, brother, because we, I don't think we, we, everybody's got their papers. We're in the 13th chapter of Revelation. I'm going to read a verse few verses to you we're talking about this morning in continuation somebody said uh well why do we need to talk about it when we're not going to be here well isn't it awesome that god wants you to know about it he doesn't do anything in the corner but god lets you know about it so that we can tell other people about it and we can warn other people and it's ever since i was a kid and, and I got saved, I knew I heard about the Antichrist. And so no one knows who he is. We can take our guesses, and I'll tell you a few guesses that I had when I was a kid growing up. But let's read verse 1 through 4. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, that's John talking, not the body of water, but the sea of people, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now this is symbolic, but it also is talking about a, a person. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and a dragon, and the dragon, dragon meaning Satan, we talked about it. Gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. 
And all the world wonder after the beast. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast or the Antichrist. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto this beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, also turn to verse 11. We're going to skip those other parts, but we'll get into it as, I, as we get into the word. And I beheld and another beast coming up out of the earth. Now, the one was the sea. Now, it talks about the earth. The earth, uh, the, the Holy Spirit uses the word earth. Uh, that man is not from above, but man is from beneath. That's why he uses the word earth. And he said, and he had two horns like a lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. That ought to tell us who he is. This is the false prophet. And it exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, or the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed. Okay? And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceives them who dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them who dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had been wounded by a sword and did live. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, for your anointings and God, your understanding and God, your wisdom. And Father, we pray that the, the anointing of God will be upon all of us as we open our ears to hear what the word of God says and what it means in our hearts and what it means for those who are going to be here on this planet Earth. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I handed out a brother, brother, um. Paul handed out a uh, few sheets here. I want you to know, first of all, that anytime God does something wonderful, oh, yeah. Satan wants to copy it. And he does copy it. He's a counterfeiter. He's the, he's the major master counterfeit. God blesses people, and he wants to let people know, hey, I'm going to make you some money. I'm going to give you some things. You're going to go to Las Vegas, and you're going to gamble, and I'm going to make sure that you win so that you bow down to me. And everybody's going to Las Vegas think, wow, I'm going to hit it big. Well, Vegas we know, and, and some people may not like what I'm about to say, but Vegas, they call it a sin city for a reason. That's right. Amen. And uh, I just heard from my brother. Uh, I did not know this, but his son and they, he lives in Las Vegas. He raised him in Las Vegas. And his son just graduated from Divinity College and is a pastor of a church. And he said they are growing. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, he's, he has a master's degree in divinity. The Antichrist, or the word Antichrist, has been used over hundreds of years. Jesus even said, among you there are minty Christ. Minty who claim to be Christ. He said, if somebody tells you, we got to go over this place because there's a there's a guy over here that he claims to be Christ and and we got to listen to him because he's so smart and so intelligent and 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 he has the words. He's not him. He's not him. There's many people who claim to be Christ. Today in our world we have a spirit in our world that is called the Antichrist spirit. Now, let me explain some things to you, and I'll explain some things to you as we go on in this message. And I'll try to go as 
quickly as I can. But anytime in the Word of God, when you see the Antichrist in a small letter, a letter A in a small letter, that means there's many of them, okay? There's many Antichrist people. There's right now, and even in America, you could hear it. They are so anti God, anti Christ. But anytime you see the capital letter A, it's talking about one man, and that is the man, the Antichrist. And the Bible gives us, tells us that he has a number, and his number is 666. That's the sign of the Antichrist. Okay? And there's a reason that all will get into it. Okay? But we want to go on. The Antichrist will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. I'm so glad. Yes. He is around. I don't doubt it. He's already here. But folks, and some some of us are thinking maybe he should, he's in America. Maybe he's in the White House or maybe he's in, you know, maybe he's in the Senate or maybe, you know, he's, he's in, you know, in somewhere in our government. Well, I, I want you to, I want to tell you that the Biden, uh, President Biden is not the Antichrist. Okay, so get it there. Y yes, a little. Can I tell you something? When I was growing up, just got saved, I was told that the Pope was the Antichrist. Can I tell you, the Pope is not the Antichrist. And then they said, Henry Kessinger is the Antichrist. I remember those days. Because he's Jew. He was Jewish. So they said he's the Antichrist. No, he's not the Antichrist. He's not the Antichrist. And then they said Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist. And then they, Jim, Jimmy Carter was the an Antichrist. And then they said Biden was the Antichrist. And then they say Obama was the Antichrist. <laughs> They're not the Antichrist. He has not been revealed. He will not be revealed until the church is raptured out of here. Okay? So somebody says, hey, I think so-and-so is the Antichrist. Well, keep your thoughts to yourself. It's not. <laughs> He's not the Antichrist. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, they may have to, that's right. Somebody uh, one time said Hitler was the Antichrist. Mussolini, Stalin, or Genghis Khan. But the Bible, there are 25 different titles given to the Antichrist, given to the person. The man. Revelation calls him the beast of the sea. See, the Holy Spirit calls the Antichrist, Satan, and the false prophet beast. Isn't that amazing? That the Holy Spirit calls him beast. He was called beast in Revelation. Beast of the sea. Daniel in 7th chapter called him the little horn. In the 8th chapter of Daniel, the king of fierce countenance and sinister schemes and superhuman knowledge. And Daniel 9, the prince who is to come. In 27, verse 27, the, the one who makes desolate. In Daniel 11, he's the willful king. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, he's the man of sin and the son of perdition. Second Themis, uh, Thessalonians 2 and 8, he is called the, the lawless one. You see, the Antichrist is already among, the Antichrist spirit is already among us. In, never in history have we seen the lawlessness as we have seen it today in America. But not just America, France and Germany and Europe is facing the same problems, and South America is facing the same problems we are. Why? Because they're getting ready for that one man called the Antichrist. The devil is preparing people's hearts. But I want you to know something. God is preparing people's hearts to receive him as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And one day God is trying his hardest and he is 
proclaiming his word and he uses people like you and I to get the message of, of the cross and get the message of Jesus Christ and his love for mankind. But the devil, as I told you a, a few weeks ago, the devil is also because he knows that his time is short. He knows his time is short, so he's trying extra hard. Hallelujah. He will come from ten nations and it could be because the Bible tells us about the old Roman Empire, the Grecian Empire, that he'll come out from among, from among those nations, Syria and Turkey, and those nations, the Middle East. Those nations will rise up against Israel and want to defeat Israel. You see, there's always been a spirit of Ishmael. Since Ishmael hated his brother Isaac, there's always been that hatred in the world for Israel. And, and the, a lot of the world hates Israel because it was Jesus who was born in Israel, in Judea, and he was crucified on the cross in Jerusalem, so they hate Jews. They blame the Jews, but it wasn't the Jews that hung Jesus on the cross. It was his love for us. He laid down his life for us. Yes, they put him on the cross. The Romans and the Jews put him on the cross and nailed him to the cross. But it was our sin and the sins of all mankind, but put Jesus on the cross. Hallelujah. Isaiah 14 and 20 says this. You shall not be joined with them in burial. He's talking about the Antichrist. Because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. And some people believe that he'll come from the tribe of Dan. And the reason why some people believe that the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. Because of the prophecies that Jacob gave him. And that prophecy said that the tribe of Dan is in Genesis 49, 17. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a adder in the path that bites the horse's heel so that his rider shall fall backwards. And as we begin to search, and I even told some ministers that they did not even know this. I told some ministers and I said to read the word of God because you'll find out when they're talking about the 144,000. And we went through this a few weeks ago that the tribe of Dan is not among them. And Dan is the furthest tribe up. And today we is known as Syria. So I believe personally now doesn't mean you have to believe this, but I believe this personally because as searching the word of God, that there's a possibility that the Antichrist, the Antichrist, would not only be Jew, but he'll be from the tribe of, of Dan and he'll be in Syria, coming from the nation of Syria. So, folks, some of you that think maybe he's coming from Rome because the Pope comes from Rome, guess what? It's not. Let me say this once and for all. The Pope is not the Antichrist, okay? <laughs> Praise God. The Antichrist will speak great things and blaspheme. But whatever, whoever, wherever he comes from, he'll be the most vicious, the most hatred person that hates the Jews and Christians. There will be those who receive Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior after the rapture. Matter of fact, let me ask you this question. Not on my notes, so I'm just asking you this question. Say you walk into the church. Sheila and I walked into the church this morning. Tammy and Ron was nowhere to be seen. She turns out you were in one bathroom. Ron was getting coffee water out of the other bathroom. All their stuff was here. All their stuff was here. <laughs> she goes, oh, the rapture take place. You have that ever happened to you? We're, we're kind of laughing because we know for a fact if the rapture took place, we'd be with them. But it's really, really cool. 
It was funny. But what would happen if you walked into church and you're coming to church and suddenly you see people's clothes are here, but they're gone. Your boots are still right there by your purse. <laughs> There's always one, huh? There's always one. The, the Antichrist will, will speak great things and blaspheme God and blaspheme his name and blaspheme his temple, his church, and blaspheme God's people in heaven and blaspheme God. According to Daniel 7 and 20, he will be a physical impressive. He will be physically impressive. He'd be like Saul. Remember Saul? King Saul? The reason why he was picked as king because he was so tall and bulky and made muscles up guy. And they said, man, he's got to be our king. We'll show them Philistines. Philistines had, to, had a Goliath. And guess what happens to Saul? It took a little David to kill the big Saul. I mean, to kill the big giant. Hallelujah. His appearance greater than his fellows, the Bible says. Which means he's abundant in size and rank. He's a man of great intellect. One who understands sinister schemes and very cunning and deceitful. Remember, his father is deceitful. The father of all lies is the devil. And the Antichrist will be like his father, the devil. Deceitful, deceiving those. And the Bible says even to, where if he was possible, the very elect would be deceived. Wow. What am I saying this morning? We need to know our Bibles. We need to know what it says, what thus saith God. We need to get that Bible in our hands, we need to get that Bible and eat it up like John ate it up. Amen. And get it inside us so that we will know for sure and know and know and know whose child you are and know who God is and Jesus Christ his son. He'll cause deceit to prosper. All those who believe in him will prosper. Because of the tribulation period the world will be in, the people devoid of any hope. There's no hope. This man will rise up and people will flock to him like they will flock to a, a desperate lamb or sheep who's desperate for something. I remember a few years ago when former president of the United States says, I want to give you hope. I want to give you hope. And that was false hope. He will give people false hope. Hallelujah. This Antichrist will. He will be a person that is, is in sheep clothing, a wolf in sheep clothing. He will he will go about bringing peace or trying to talk peace and at the same time behind the backs of people he will seize kingdoms that's how he gets ten nations ten horns very deceitful he'll despise false gods and will do according to his own will and exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and blaspheme God the Father. And the Bible says in Daniel eleven thirty seven, 37. Neither will he regard the God of his fathers. Nor of desire of women. Nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. This man will be given power by Satan himself. Especially when Satan is kicked out of heaven. See the Bible tells us that Satan right now is accuser of the brethren. 
He's standing before the God. And he's accusing you. Every time you make a mistake, every time you think you've made a mistake, every time you, you have doubt or fear in you, he accuses you before the Father. And one day, hallelujah, I believe Michael will start the war. Under God's command, Michael will, the archangel will, will start the war and Satan will be kicked out of heaven. No more has he any, any access to the throne. Remember what God said to him? He said, what do you think you're doing? He said, I'm going to and fro on the earth seeking whom I may devour. God, I even had a conversation with him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? There'll be none of that anymore. He'll be kicked on the, out, the, out of heaven on the earth. And the angel of the Lord comes out from the throne of God and warns. And he says, woe, woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan himself has been kicked out and he's gone to earth. And you talk about hell being broke loose. And he will give the keys or somehow he has loaned the keys or given the keys. I'm not sure how that goes, but he has the key to the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit will be opened. And all the demons of hell and all the demons that have been bound in there, even that other angel, remember we talked about, the one that is fallen angel along with Satan, Lucifer, he will be loosed because he's been in the pit since Alexander the Great. He'll be loosed out of that pit and he will cause the Antichrist to have great power. And also the false prophet, we'll get into the false prophet. Hallelujah, I'm going to try to hurry. The time is getting by so fast. He will make peace with Israel for seven years. That's Daniel's one week. At midpoint, three and a half years, the Antichrist will break this treaty, invade Israel, set up his headquarters in Jerusalem, which is the capital of Israel. Remember who made the capital of Israel? Uh, Jerusalem. Remember who said it? President Trump and Bibi, they made it a Jerusalem the headquarters, the capital, making war against all Christians and Jews. The Bible says he will persecute. The word Hebrew word for persecute means to wear out, to snuff them out. I want you to know he's already doing that to people in, in Christianity, in the church. He's trying to wear you out. You ever feel like you just can't go on anymore? I am so tired. I don't think I'll go to church today. That's the devil telling you that. He's trying to wear you out. You get so busy you don't have time to go to church. I know people. I've heard people to even tell me I'm so busy I couldn't come to church. The reason why you were so busy because the devil had you so busy and so he's trying to wear you out so you don't want to go to church. I know people who just flat refuse to go to church because now they say, I don't have time. I'm, I'm too tired. I need a rest. So I can't go to church. Well, folks, it doesn't look like you're working to me. You're all sitting here. Isn't that great? When we come to the house of the Lord, I tell you what, I've had people tell me, well, brother, I used to sleep in church. No, don't raise your hand. I used to sleep in church. Or I, that's, that's my nap time. Well, you don't get any naps with me being the pastor. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, the reason why you feel that way? Because of the presence and the power of God. Amen. He relaxes you. That's the rest. That's why God said we're two or, you know, we're, we're the gathered in his name. We're, we're the gathered together. We're to come to the house of the Lord. Not, forsake, not the assembling, uh, forsake not the assembling yourselves together, especially as you see the last days approaching. There's a reason for that because the devil is working overtime. The, he wants to snuff you out. That's what the Hebrew word for persecution means. To wear you out and to snuff you out. 
Hallelujah. Let me, let me go on. I got to hurry. He'll set up his own image in the temple and cause everyone to worship his image. He will kill the two witnesses. Remember, I, it says right on your paper here. I, I wrote, we wrote it down for you. That he is the counterfeit of Christ. Bible says that those are on the housetop flee in Jerusalem flee of those who are pregnant boy you better run and get quickly get away from them the second half of the seven year tribulation is the worst this world has ever seen or ever will see Satan has been kicked out of of, of heaven to earth and the fallen angels of the bottom of this pit released and with all the demons of hell will be released and those those Demons of hell, John describes what they look like. They have a tail of a scorpion. They have teeth like a lion. And they will bite people. They'll be invisible. Those demons are invisible and they will bite people. And they will suffer for five months wishing they were dead. Even trying to kill themselves. But they won't come. Death won't come. That's hell. You don't want to be here. Let's talk about the beast of the earth. Just got a few minutes with him. It's the Holy Spirit who calls both the Antichrist and the prophet, a false prophet beast, as the direct, because they are an unholy trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they're trying to be the unholy trinity. They are the unholy trinity. They copy, they try to counterfeit. So they're, they think they're. God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In reality, who they are is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. The second half of the tribulation tells of the reality of his purpose and his plan. See, the Holy Spirit has one main objective, and that is to glorify the Son. The Antichrist, or the false prophet has one objective, and that is to cause people to war worship the Antichrist. He will be a religious figure, and all the religions of the world will follow this false prophet. Can I tell you something? Religion is going to be so much stronger after the rapture of the church. Religion is man-made and people with man-made religions will do everything in their power to control people. And that's what the false prophet will do under the Antichrist with the power of Satan behind him. He will try to cause every single person in the world. And America is not exempt from it. I do not believe that all the things that are going to happen around in the Middle East is going to happen in America. However... America, especially lately, we have followed. We want to be like the rest of the world. Remember, we used to be a sovereign nation and exempt from everybody and all the things that everybody in the world did. We, we didn't want nothing to do with because we are United States of America. But when the rapture of the church takes place, hallelujah, all the Christians are gone. America will be just like any other nation. They want to be like that right now. They'll get their wish. When we are gone. And we'll follow suit. And America has a major plan. And that is to be just like them. Be just like the rest of the world. You're, they're going to get their wish. Hallelujah. It's not strange because right now. And it has been in world history. Is that. Is that religion and politics power, these two forces has controlled the whole entire world. And they're going to control the whole entire world again. The false, false prophet will be doing great wonder signs so that he makes fire come down out of heaven through the power of Satan. And in chapter 13, it tells us the head was wounded to death and the death wounded was healed. Now it's talking, the first one is in, in, in the first few verses, I believe it's verse 3 and 4. 
the wound was healed. It's talking about a nation. One of the heads of the nation is going to be healed. But in the, in the other verse, 14th verse, it's talking about the Antichrist will be wounded unto death. And he will be healed by Satan. And they will call it a great miracle. And you talk about people following him after that. People will just flock to him, the Antichrist. It's important that we know all this stuff. Why? So that we can warn people. Let me tell you. Not everybody will follow the Antichrist. The Bible tells us that under the altar in heaven, and John saw it because it's future, and it's going to happen in the future, people will look, and they'll follow the Antichrist, but there will be a lot of people, a lot of Jews, and a lot of Christians who will not follow the Antichrist, and they will be killed for it. They will die for it. Not everybody in the world, but mostly in that area of those 10 nations in, in, in the Middle East, mostly in the Middle East, but in the world will also follow, but not in a capacity like the Middle East, not where the Antichrist is. And those people will die for the cause of Christ because they accepted Christ and would not take the mark. And the Bible says, I had somebody right in this chair not too long ago ask me, what about the Antichrist? Do we have to take the mark? First of all, we as Christians who are born again right now, when the rapture of church takes place, we'll be gone. So we won't have to worry about that question. But those who are left behind, who receive Christ afterwards, they'll have to make up their mind if they're going to serve Satan, the Antichrist, or they're going to serve Jesus Christ. And the Antichrist is going to make sure people take the mark of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast, it will be a voluntary thing. Yes, they will try to force you. And if you don't take it, they'll kill you. But if you do take it, your soul is condemned to hell. Say, okay, okay, Pastor, what does that have to do? What does that have to do with us? There has been a fear for years and years and years and years that when you get your Social Security card, that's the mark of the beast. No, it's not. Remember those codes that you see on your packages? There's what? lines and codes. That's the mark of the Antichrist. No, it's not. Will he use those? Uh, absolutely. To control people. Those things you have on your phone, you know, it says, click right here and we'll get you all set up. That will be used. I won't do it. But that will be used in the end time. So everything is getting geared for that time. Everything in, 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 in our society is getting geared for it because they're, I think people are looking forward to it. Because in, in the hearts of minds of people, a lot of people are so evil in their hearts. But there are so good people. There's good people. And there's people that love Jesus Christ. With all their heart, with all their soul, and we, and we must tell people about Jesus. The message of the cross has got to get out to people, because I don't want one person left behind. I wouldn't want to be here if the rapture takes place. When it takes place, I don't want to be here. I want to be gone. And every single person that's listening to my voice this morning. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you could know him. And all these things I've talked about this morning, the good thing is next Sunday I'm preaching on victory ahead. The man on the white horse, the one on the white horse. There's always an answer, and that is Jesus. He's coming back. Hallelujah. It's called the second coming. But the rapture of the church is about to take place. And we need to be ready. And we need to get other people ready. 
And the reason we share this with you this morning is so that you can know what is about to happen. So other people can know what is about to happen on this earth. And as we're so close to it. And if we see the signs, Jesus talked about it more than he talked about heaven. He talked about it in Matthew 24. He told us about it. What was going to happen on earth. He talked about it. And he told us. We need to be prepared. Our hearts need to be prepared. We need to be ready and we need to get people ready. If there was any time that you wanted to share Jesus with your family, do it now. Don't wait until, oh, I went, maybe the time's not right. It is right. Jesus said, look on the fields. They're white already for harvest. Get him in. He knows what he's saying because the Bible says there's the angel coming. And he has a great big sickle in his hand. And he's going to wipe this earth with the sickle. And people are are going to follow false gods and false religion and false prophets. That's why we as God's people need to preach the truth and the word of God. See, the devil likes to put a half truth in there. Maybe just a little dab of truth, but the rest of it's lies. And it, it's just to entice people, just to get him thinking, get people thinking, wait a minute. He's talking about truth, so he must be from God. No, he's not. Either it's all truth or no truth. Either the word is a lie or it's, it's fake or it's the truth. The word is truth. He put it in the word of God for us in the book so that we might know what was about to happen. When, he, when John was writing, I'm sure John just bawled his head off. Cried and cried and cried. I know he had to. If he had any feelings in him, he had to cry when he'd write all these things. It got to the point where God said, John, stop. Stop writing Seal up the book. There's so much that's going to happen that we don't know about. We only know what the word of God says. But there's so much things that's going to happen in this world. We have to warn people about it. There's the heaven, the gain, and hell to lose. We've got to give him our hearts, our Our souls. The Bible says it's not God's will for anyone to perish, but all would come to repentance. And we've got to warn people. Stand your feet, if you will. There's millions of people that do don't know Jesus. And they will hear. I used to think, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive their king. I used to think that was a great Christmas song. But did you know that's the millennial song? I didn't know that. I began to read about it in this joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. That's when Jesus comes back the second time. And he's ruler of the whole entire world. And his headquarters is in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And people will come up to you and say, hey, I heard about Jesus. Can you take me to him? I heard about Jesus. Can you tell me about him? That's going to be wonderful. But until then, guess what? People are still hungry and thirsty after righteousness. And Bible says, Jesus said, they shall be filled. You were praying over her. The anointing. Can I tell you? 
I pray this morning that the anointing of God will be on your lips and on your mouth, your mind, and your heart so that when you see somebody who doesn't know Jesus or if you see somebody or family member who don't know Jesus, you can tell them freely without reservation, without fear, in holy boldness. Brother Cruz used to say that all, all the time. Lord, give me that holy boldness. We were in the mall, Mesa Mall. It was before it was really a mall, I think. We're sitting there in the mall. He's, I'm walking with Sheila and, and, and uh, Geneva. And, and Albert's talking to this man. And I heard him say, hey, pastor, come over here. Pastor Ron, brother Ron, come over here. And I said, what's going on, Albert? He said, this man needs prayer. Let's pray for him. I said, okay. So we bent down and we prayed for that man right then and there. Hallelujah. That's what holy boldness is about. When I think of holy boldness, I think of Albert Cruz. <laughs> He's not afraid of nothing. I'll tell everybody about Jesus. I don't care. They cursed in my face. I'll tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard one guy on TV the other day said, if they can curse God in public, I can, I can praise God in public. Hallelujah. They can use God's name in vain. I can lift up his name. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that. They can shout for joy. I can shout for joy also. You want to hear somebody shout for joy. You just get a bunch of Christians together to get Jesus in the midst of them. God, we'll be shouting for joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, and I pray that your word will just right now, Father, will fall upon your people, that we'll take your word in our hearts, Lord Jesus, and give it away. Take your word, Lord Jesus, and spread it abroad. Spread it as far as we can, and Lord, share it with people so that they too could give their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God, teach us your word. Oh, Lord, I... If I can use my own word, cram it in our slow God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, right now I pray that your word be in it so much that, God, that we, it be so nourishing to our bodies, your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for your people, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those that are listening, God, that they don't know Jesus. I pray, Lord God, right now, by the name of Jesus Christ, that they would give their hearts to you. God, they would recognize you as Lord and Savior. They could say with me, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Master. I, I acknowledge you, Lord. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, and I acknowledge that you are the Lord. And, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, all my failures, everything that I've done wrong. Lord, I give it to you. And, Lord, you nailed it to the, you were nailed to the cross with it, Lord Jesus. You took it upon yourself. Lord, forgive me. Again. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Master and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake hands, be friendly. Go with God. God will go with you. Amen. Amen.